So 30,500 is the technical level. So it needs to stay for five to seven days above that level on a, on a daily basis. This is the same narrative that spiked the marijuana stocks back in the day when, oh, it was going to be legal. It's the new thing. It's the same thing with the solar stocks at one point when they were new. It's this AI kind of thought process. Everyone gets excited about it. But in reality, the revenue is not going to be generated from this area for years to come. So again, it creates this spike. But if you look at the chart of NVIDIA here, there are, is a confluence of resistance points up here around this 280, 275, 285 area. And to me, the charts are everything here. And honestly, if we see a recession, cyclicality of the semiconductors tells you that they're going to see a big downside move. So for me, I'm short NVIDIA here. And again, looking for a decent decline back to probably the low 200s. Well, if you are, if you're, if you're bearish on the markets overall, then yeah, you, your thesis yeah. makes sense because the market's going to pull down these high beta stocks. You know, it's Apple yep. is really interesting. Just yesterday, they announced a partnership with Goldman Sachs. Uh, deposits now into Apple. You can, you can actually, it's a bank now. It's <laughs> you can de a, four point one five percent APY, which is ten times higher than most traditional banks. So Apple is not just a finance. It, it's now a financial services company. <laughs> I'm still waiting for the car. When's the car coming? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, to be honest, again, I look at Apple and and I understand they're trying to. So by the way, if they shift into more of a bank, that's a much lower PE business. So I think that has to be taken into account too, that we look at the the, the earnings per share for a JPM and what the PE ratio is and so forth. But I, listen, they're still, they're still a tech company. But again, how fast are they growing? How does it justify a 25 to 30 PE ratio that in going into a possible recession where people have to spend $1,300 for an iPhone? I don't get it. I think this is a, a play that has been used as a safety hedge where people are putting money, taking money from banks, putting it into this play because it's known to be kind of a safe haven. I think that's a mistake and I think you'll see a big decline. All right. And I'm sure you've seen this before, David. Yeah. You, this is the psychology of the market chart. Right. So so basically you have this run up. And to me, this run up that we've seen looked very much like the run that we saw from COVID all the way up to 2021. We then had this sharp decline here. Now, look at the price action that we're seeing here in this psychology of the market chart. It's a lot of sideways to slightly up. Now, if I flip back to my S&P chart. And I want to go to my weekly chart. Look at what we've done here. Have the same sort of sharp getting to euphoria, the sharp move down. There's even this little pivot where we had a lower low and then sideways consolidation. And so again, if you look at this down move and this choppiness, this is exactly the part within the psychology of the market that is going to tell us that this is the next down move to go. And just to reiterate, I want to switch back to that chart. Just remember what we just saw right there. And that's this part. We're right in the midst of this complacency period where people are saying, oh, it's, you know, the bull market was so great. I want to revisit that. It's going to come back. I really hope it comes back. Let's just sit and wait here. And that's what leads us to this next period of downside via psychology of the market chart. So amazing how accurate and how the chart of the S&P 500 here follows this to a T, the complacency chart portion. I don't understand what people are being complacent about. I mean, you've just outlined a case for a recession. Uh, we are expecting earnings compression. <laughs> what's what, well, what's say, driving listen, I could complacency? Say, I could I'm, say, just, listen, no, 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 no. See, the, see, I could say I'm complacent, uh, or I could say that I'm, I'm, I'm expecting a recession till the till I'm blue in the face. The question is, does the market reflect that? And the answer is the mar the market. We we just talked about how the market's ignored that the what the Fed said last week, what Warren Buffett has said. I mean, the the market says, who cares? We're going to be fine. Let's just keep putting money into the market here because we'll see the all time highs. I mean, look at the crypto markets right now. They're they're as bullish in the crypto markets as we were when we were at 69,000. That's how quickly we've got back. That's complacency. They're basically saying, hey, listen, we're going back to all-time highs. To me, that's a red flashing warning sign out there to be very careful in this market. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about um, earnings, actually, just drill a bit deeper. So are, are you expecting earnings to compress across all sectors, or do you think certain sectors will do better than others? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think that for the most part, for instance, J.P. Morgan, Bank of America, you know, some of the bigger banks, they were a recipient of money flow, obviously, from the crisis, the banking crisis from regionals. They're able to hold up in the in the face of a lot of this stuff. So there's going to be pockets where they're going to do OK. But overall, I think when you go to tech earnings like Apple is going to be really interesting to me. We've heard some warning signs from Apple over in China and so forth. Remember, when people start to get a little bit behind on bills and, for instance, I just read an article talking about how there's a a huge lag now. People are behind on their auto loans uh, significantly. Um, so when you come to upgrading your iPhone to the next cycle, are people going to start to just choose to wait six months? That could be a massive impact to the earnings on Apple. All right. Same thing with Tesla. If money starts to get tight, I mean, we've seen Tesla cut the price of the of their cars, what, five times in the last month or two. Um, there's a reason that's happening. Number one, competition. Number two, people aren't running out to spend the the levels of money on a Tesla that they were a year ago or so. So there are signs out there. Uh, you could talk about job cuts at Amazon. You could talk about job cuts at Google. There are signs that that Wall Street, these big players are starting to tighten their belts. To me, that's an indicator I need to be careful as an investor. So your 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 Bitcoin needs to hold thirty thousand dollars for how long before you change your view? So 30,500 is the technical level. So it needs to stay for five to seven days above that level on a, on a daily basis above that level. How many level. days are we? And then I think, I, what's that? How many days are we now so far? So, so far zero, right? We're still, okay. we're now just above it for the first day again. So it resets every time it comes below. So oh. yesterday we closed in the 20, 29,000 range. It must stay above. And one of the reasons why this is so important, people say, well, why does it have to stay above for X amount of days? Because algorithms and institutions want you to think it's broken out. I've seen this on charts of stocks, commodities, crypto, where they're trying to get you to trigger long so that you buy and they can unload their position. So the longer it stays above, the harder it is for them to utilize capital to push it back down at a certain point in the future. So that's why it's important that it stays above for a certain amount of time. So ultimately, right now, we're basically back to day one here. Let's see if it closes above and then we'll go from there. Okay. And stock markets, we've, we've, we've been over that. Uh, gold, you're expecting, uh, you're still expecting gold to be the top uh, asset this year? Yeah, I am. I am. I do think Bitcoin still has a pullback coming that could be dramatic. And I do think gold is the best performer by year end. We'll see if I'm right. We got to have our live interview again, end of year, and we'll, we'll decide. Yeah, on we'll that. do that. Yeah. Go, go, uh, we haven't talked about oil in detail, but just very quickly, are you, are you factoring in energy into your um, decision as to whether or not that's going to be the best asset? Yeah, so so far I'm really honestly neutral on oil. It's it's traded off the lows here. Um, it's just consolidating. I don't really have a viewpoint here. I do think that in the second half of the year you're probably going to see some downside if we do see that recession come to fruition. But right now, in the next few months, it's hard to it's hard to pinpoint directional here. Um, I do continue to like nat gas. I've been liking natural gas for a while. Um, it's just been so beaten down. We are seeing another update today. Today would be the third update in a row, so it's getting a great technical bounce. Uh, but I continue to be bullish on that. Yeah, that was my next question, uh, whether or not this rally has changed your short-term direction. I know you are long-term bullish, and we can get to that, but I know short-term you have been bearish on Bitcoin. The rally, though, has that changed your mind? No, the rally hasn't really. I mean, again, if we look back at the the bear market of 2017, well, 2018, 2019, I mean, we had rallies from 3,500 all the way back to 10,000 and then back to 3,500. So, so you've had these bounces in Bitcoin that have actually even been bigger than what we're seeing here. Uh, we're just up around 100% or just under 100% versus back then it was 200%. So I think we have to keep that in mind. I also think that if you look at what the Fed has said, you have to be very careful here. So we do know that the, the SEC continues to sue and, and kind of put down regulation or the beginning structure of regulation in crypto. And then the Federal Reserve just came out recently and said, hey, guys, we expect a slight recession. And if you're anyone like me and you hear slight and the Fed saying slight and they said transitory and we saw what happened, you have to be nervous about risk assets in the future. And that's where I am. I honestly think that stock market's getting ready to have a second half that is going to be atrocious. And my guess is it drags down crypto as well.